You know, tonight is a special night for me. As I was talking with Daniel before the service started, he said, Kerry, I believe this is the most we've ever received in a week's time. He said, I believe when the final count is in, we'll have over 500 viewers for this week. I noticed uh, that many who responded some personally have told me that this was an eye-opener for them. Understanding what we're up against. We're not, we're not fighting, as Paul said in Ephesians, if you'll turn now to chapter 6, we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. What's going on in America tonight is not a battle against NBC or CBS or MSNBC or whatever the news may be where you listen. I listen to Fox myself and I don't make that a secret. I think I've gotten more, in, more misinformation on CNN than the other broadcasts. And beloved, the devil's at war with this much. He's using them as instruments to tell his lies. He's always been a liar. Did you know that? He lied to Adam and Eve in the garden. Thou shall not surely die. God didn't really mean that. Don't you know a God of love wouldn't do anything like that? I still hear that today. God of love wouldn't send anybody to hell. I said, oh, really? Where did you read that verse? Mm -hmm. A lot of misinformation. And I think I quoted last Sunday night from the scripture that says, in the last days, false teachers shall arise deceiving many. Now, who's the author of false teachers and false teaching? The God of this world. Who is the God of this world? Satan. He's in charge. And we're losing our young people hand over fist, man. Listening to all the devil's lies. And I want to encourage you tonight as we just very subtly look back at the closing words of this chapter. And then we're going to go to the Old Testament. Because see, God's plan and program has been the same throughout the ages. It's never changed. Let me say it again. God's program with his people, Israel, a chosen people, His plan and purpose has never changed. Keep your eye on Israel, friend. As the old song says, keep your eye on the eastern sky for redemption draweth nigh. Lift up your head. Every time I turn on the news, I can't wait to see what happened in Israel? What happened in Iran? And Brenda, I assure you tonight that the devil is alive and well. And like a roaring lion, the scripture says, he's walking around seeking whom he may devour. Seeking who will listen to his false teaching to the lies that he's peddling in America tonight and around the world. I want all of you on the internet to know the devil's peddling his lies to you, my friends, just like he is in America. Do you know, uh, when I hear the word socialism, I just cringe. Do you know socialism 
has never worked and it never will. Never. You know, when they run out of money, where do they go? When the coffers are empty. I like that old song we used to sing outside the dining hall when Doris and I were in the, <laughs> the early days of our, of our education washing dishes after we ate. We ran the dishwasher, picked up a little extra money so we could stay in school. Amen? Amen. Help pay our room and board in the dormitory. We'd sing the song, This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. If my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Well, you know, as I've gotten older in the years of past, I feel less and less at home in this world. Well, you know, the Lord told us we're not to love the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. This world is in the hands of Satan. Now, the devil can't do anything that God doesn't allow him to do. So if God allows it, now listen, he has to use it for the good of his people and for his glory. Stay with me. Whatever God allows in your life and my life, in order for all things to work together for good to those who love the Lord, he has to use it for my good and his glory, for your good and his glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. So don't sweat the small stuff. The best is yet to come. Amen. I want to ask you tonight, He said, I'm an ambassador in bonds, verse 20, chapter 6, writing from prison, that, there may, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I speak boldly, I ought to speak boldly. You know, when they were filled with the Spirit in the book of Acts, they spake with boldness. And they pointed their finger in the face of those who had crucified him and said, you have crucified the Son of God, whereof we are all witnesses. We were witnesses to it. And the Bible says they were, the, the Greek word pricked in their heart like you'd take a pin or a needle. They were pricked in their heart by the Holy Spirit. That means they were convicted they realized they crucified the Son of God. And they said, what must we do? If what you're saying is true, what do we do? He said, repent. Preacher mentioned this in his message today on baptism. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In other words, make a declaration of your faith. You've turned from sin. You've turned to follow Jesus. You answered his call when he said, come follow me. And you remember what, in one place in the gospel it says, and they came to Jesus and said, Lord, we have forsaken all to follow thee. And you know what Jesus answered in return? No man has forsaken all for my sake in the gospels. 
But what he hath not received in this present world a hundredfold more and in the world to come life everlasting. The best of both worlds. Amen. Think about that. I heard my dear friend singing a moment ago as Esau was playing. They were practicing a song that was my mother's favorite. I mentioned it last Sunday evening. A child of the king. My father's rich in houses and lands. He holdeth the wealth of the world in his hand. He's not broke. God isn't broke. He has blessings untold. He wants to bless us more than we want to be blessed. You hear what I said? More than we want to be blessed, He wants to bless us. But like the children of Israel, when God led them out of the promised land with great victory, we balked like they balked. Balked. B-A-L-K. They balked. you ever balk? Lord, I just don't believe I want to do that. I don't remember when I walked down the aisle and made my profession of faith that I really signed up for that. <laughs> you ever feel that way? Mm. Hey, I didn't sign up for it. I don't want to take any mission trip to Africa. I don't want to get on any flight that lasts. We spent 23 hours getting home one year from South Africa. We've been on a mission trip. We were already worn out from two weeks of teaching vacation Bible school and trekking all over South Africa. Boy, what a, what a plane ride that was. And some of them got sick with strep throat and whatever because the, the resistance was low, we were tired, we were weary. And you know when I turned to Tommy Watson who was pastor of this church at that time, I said, Tommy, it isn't easy, but it's worth it. <laughs> it isn't easy, Tommy, but it's worth it. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. I want to encourage you tonight, friend. When a man writes from prison and said, I'm here because God wants me to get the gospel out. And I've said several times in this place, the only way God could get Paul still long enough to write these long letters mm -hmm. was to put him in jail where he wouldn't be distracted. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think when you read his prison epistles, you need to keep that in mind. You remember in Philippians he said, I have a desire to depart and be with the Lord, which is far better than what I'm going through right now. But he said, for me to remain here is more necessary for you. You know, you may not think I'm necessary. I might not be necessary to you, but I'm necessary to God. See? And you may not feel necessary sometimes. You know, people don't notice what you do for the Lord. And, and you know, there's no pastor to give them recognition like I tried to, to do a moment ago quickly. I'm sure I left somebody out. But anyway, I heard the president say the same thing, so I'm in good company, trying to thank all the people that had helped him in his rally in Ohio. And he said, I'm sure I'll left somebody out. I'll hear about it. <laughs> I'll hear about it when I get home. You know, my wife sometimes will say, you forgot so-and-so. And this last thing she said this morning on the way to church, the teacher class said, don't let me forget. That Florida lost her sister this week to MRSA. Mm -hmm. Incurable disease. 
nothing they could do. We have to remind each other. I'm so glad that the scripture reminds me. Now I want you to go with me right now with that thought in mind to Joshua in the Old Testament, the book of Joshua, the first chapter. The Lord's, the Lord's charge to Joshua, first chapter. In his own words, Joshua gives this testimony. Listen to it. After the death of Moses, now remember, Moses is dead. Do you know not even Moses got to go into the promised land? Think about it. After all those years of serving the Lord and leading those people and all that he had to put up with, you'd think that God would just make allowances, don't you? But see, he's a just God. What he says he means and what he means is, hey, he says in his word. He means every word of it. Let's read a little further. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. Moses' assistant. He was sort of the assistant pastor. <laughs> okay. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you. Now, this is God speaking. The time for come has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, these stubborn, hard-headed, backslidden, <laughs> disobedient cotton pickers. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. I know you love them, but I love them too. See, I have to be careful because Danny's one of them. <laughs> He's a completed Israelite. <laughs> He's a completed Jew. He came to know Jesus as the Messiah. Now listen. So the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. Now we've been reading in Ephesians about all the blessings that God has given us in the New Testament, right? Paul said to the people of Ephesus and all those who received that letter, a circular letter, he said, we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. 164 times, I want to repeat it, Paul refers to the fact that the believer and the blessings are in Christ. If we're not in Christ, we're just without hope. Now look, I promise you what I promised Moses. Look, same God, same promise. Look. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness, and I've been there twice, walked through that land, went to Ben-Gurion's grave, went to the house where he wrote, saw his study, his very humble little dwelling where he lived while he was still alive. And remembering the words that I'd read as a child and as a preacher, a young preacher, one day the desert would bloom like a rose. And I saw that. I saw the difference in Egypt and Israel. Israel's learned to irrigate with their underground little, little pipes with holes in it. It's a type of irrigation, not a lot of water, but it's a drip process. And everything is just green and the yards, wherever there's water, things will grow. The land was rich. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. And this is the land that God promised his people. 
Do you know what God's promised us? Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. My subject tonight at this late hour is possessing our possessions. We already possess it. We've already been blessed. We just don't know how to get our blessings down out of the shelf and unwrap them and enjoy them and appreciate them. The gifts that God has given us, he gave us the day we were saved. We're not seeking a second or a third blessing. We got that a long time ago. We've been a Christian very long. God has blessings abundant every day. We just sang it a moment ago. Every day, every hour, let me feel thy cleansing power. I need thee every hour. Step by step, moment by moment, I'm kept in his love. Moment by moment, I'm life from above. Looking to Jesus. Till glory doth shine. Moment by moment, Jesus is mine. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, you fling that in Satan's face. That rebuke, he knows it's true. He can't, you, listen, he can't argue with you. Any more than he can argue with Jesus out there in the wilderness. When he said, you bow down and serve me and I'll give you. Well, it was his to give because he's God of this world. But Jesus didn't bow down. Now Israel had been worshiping a golden calf while Moses was up there on the mountain getting the word from the Lord. You remember that? You remember why he threw him down and had to go back the second time? God forgave that. God's mercy will give him a second chance. Because he was so disgusted and disappointed with the people. Sort of like Jesus, when his righteous anger was stirred up in the Garden of Eden, when the apostles went to sleep, and he was over there praying and suffering agony, remembering what the Father had told him, what was going to happen. And he came and he said, Could you not watch with me one hour? One hour? It's like a lot of Baptists that can't sit and still in church for an hour. But they go to a ball game for three and a half, four hours, and wasn't that a wonderful game? Oh, I just had a wonderful time. You know, we do what we want to do, friends. We find a way. Amen? Amen. Do I, do I deserve more than that. Amen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I thought you'd gone to sleep on me now. Now listen. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north. From the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. No one will be able to stand against you. You know what Jesus said about his church? The gates of hell cannot stand up as you go forward against you. They can't stand against you. I got out to this gate a while ago. It was locked. <laughs> Had to open it. Because we're in a secure place. Amen? Amen? That's what we're trying to do to our nation. A nation, not a nation, without a wall around it. If you don't believe that, ask Israel. Uh huh? Come on now. No one will be able to stand against you long, as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Boy, what a promise that is. Now you put, you underline that. Wish you had a red ink pen or a, mar a marker a highlighter to highlight that scripture. I notice in my Bible app you can highlight words. You know? Listen, friend. Be strong and very courageous. How many people are doing that tonight? Strong and very courageous. 
You know, I have a habit of saying to my wife, when I get home, I say, was that too strong tonight? <laughs> Lou, you've heard me say that, haven't you? When I was speaking on Tuesday night or Thursday night, mm -hmm. Tuesday night, wasn't it? Thursday. Thursday. I, I don't know why I get that mixed up. But anyway, I'd say, was that too strong tonight? He said, not for me. <laughs> you know, not for me. Yeah, if your heart's right, it's not too strong. See? It's only those backslidden people that want to pass the buck to somebody else that get upset about strong stand, strong preaching, strong words, but be strong in the Lord. Now look, be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. All the instructions that Moses gave you. Somebody had to pass it down, right? Now in the New Testament, see, we have some different instructions. Stay with me. I said a moment ago that God's plan and purpose for his people, the same. We've been grafted in. We're part of the true, true Israel. Paul reminds us of that in the New Testament. Now, when you realize that and you put all those promises and blessings from the Old Testament about the abundant life and the abundant in the land flowing with milk and honey, you'll understand why I told my dad one day when he sang that song, I'm bound for the promised land or who will come and go with me. I said, Dad, you know he's not talking about heaven. He's talking about victory. The promised land was not heaven. It was abundant living. It was a land of milk and honey. See, most people, when they sing that song, I'm bound for the promised land, they're thinking about heaven. They're not thinking about the promises of God to give them life and to give it more abundantly. So we're to be strong and of good courage. For you are the one who will lead these people, he said, to possess the land that I swore to their ancestors I would give them. All right, so be strong and very courageous, verse 7. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Oh, boy, that's appropriate. Did you hear that? Did you read that? Don't turn to the right or to the left. I think somebody ought to send that to our president. Say, do you know what you're saying is biblical? Slap dab in the middle. Walk in a straight line. It's a straight gate and a narrow way. Listen, that leads to life. And don't wander off to the right or to the left. Don't deviate. Don't start saying, well, that isn't what, really, what the Bible means. You know, I've got my own idea, they'll say. I got my own interpretation of that verse. Be careful. And remember this, let me say once more, the best commentary on the scriptures are the scriptures themselves. So here we are. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid or discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Listen. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. All right, I want you to put your Bible down and close your eyes and pray with me for a moment. I want to help you tonight. You know, the disciples came to Jesus, said, Lord, teach us to pray. Well, I'm not the Lord, but, but friend, I want to teach you something. 
if you don't if you don't praise him and honor him he's our heavenly father he's almighty God our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven see that's God's plan And give us this day our daily bread. We're to live one day at a time. Take no thought for tomorrow. This prayer we pray at the close of every service of the 12-step program. Every time we meet, think about it. Do you ever really think about what, what he's saying? What he's trying to teach us? Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses in the same manner, that little word as is a big word, in the same manner and to the same degree that we forgive others. For if we forgive not men their trespasses, neither will our Father in heaven forgive us our trespasses. I submit to you that a lot of people are calling on the Lord with unforgiveness in their heart. And they don't need to be asking the Lord for forgiveness if they're not willing to forgive. Now I want to say to all my dear friends on the internet tonight, the promises of the Lord are for all those who know the Lord, who've turned to the Lord to follow the Lord and give Him their life and their all and to say, Lord, I want to follow you the rest of my life. As our pastor said this morning, we need to share life with him as he shares life with us. We have a relationship, a fellowship with Jesus. And Jesus said, you come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. See, we have work to do, friend. We have to help those who've never found that straight and narrow way. And there may be some listening tonight who do not know that straight and narrow way. They've never taken that step to turn from the way they've been going and to follow Jesus and say, Father, I've been going my way. I've been doing my will. And I'm coming to you, Lord, asking your forgiveness. And Lord, that you'll set me free from sin and sin's curse and from sin's power in my life. And I want to be free to follow you and serve you and love you the rest of my life. Oh, friend, it's so simple when you understand it. He loves you tonight. He wants to come into your life and fill you with blessings abundant, just like he wanted to bless Israel. If they'd follow him, and he brought them through the, the sea and he brought them through the wilderness and and he would, have, he would, as one fellow said, the Lord who brought them out would bring them in if they'd just listen. if they just obey. And Lord, that's what we need to learn tonight. We pray that you'll teach us that. Even as we pray right now, Lord, remind us of the simplicity. Lord, you've told us that a little child shall lead them. Sometimes a child can simply come to Jesus before he has all this baggage in his life to give up and before he's learned to sin and likes to sin and longs to sin. He comes to Jesus. And then he has to learn how to live for Jesus. To walk with him. To talk with him every day. To read his word. To be a true follower. A true disciple of Jesus. Oh Lord, teach us. Teach us, Lord. And may we, like Paul, learn to pray. And may we learn, as he did, the need that he had in his life for the prayers of others who were seeking to be more like Jesus. Amen. Father, I want people like that praying for me and for my ministry. And so, Lord, we come tonight to ask you to speak to every heart that people will open their heart to you as we give them the hymn of invitation tonight. 
Oh, Lord, we praise you and thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Take your hymnal and turn with us tonight, friends. Page four, uh, 406. I'm sorry. Thank you. We need a cross. Two eighty, two eighty. Never change. 